Welcome to the UFC Fight Island 6 on the Three Piece Combo MMA Show brought to you by the 5 Reasons Sports Network. I'm your host Jonathan, aka Three Piece Combo, and today we're going to go ahead and break down the main event of the Brian Ortega versus Chan Sung Jung Korean Zombie main event and also the Jessica Andrade versus the Caitlyn Chukagian fight. Now this is an awesome, awesome card. We have two guys that have been going in it for a long time. I want to say a little bit over a year for now. Um, the fight didn't start off having bad blood. I think it was booked early last year. And then the fight fell out. And they had a backstage falling between, you know, Ortega and Korean Zombie. Or Ortega called him, I don't know if I can say the B word. But he called him the B word. And, um, yeah, so it was, it was, it got heated. And then Zombie had the eye surgery. So that put him out for a while. Of course, the pandemic came. And, and so it's been a while. It's been brewing for a while. Um, and this is going to be a, a great fight because Ortega is coming off a loss. It was his first loss of his career in a championship fight. Um, you know, he lost against against Max Holloway, where I think he broke his orbital, orbital bone. And he just got beat up that fight. It was not a not a very competitive fight uh, for Ortega. And then Zombie's coming in, winning three of his last four, but the only loss that he's had um over the last four fights was the one against Yara Rodriguez where he gets knocked out in literally the last second by a twisting elbow of some court of some sort and um yeah so that was so basically one four in a row he did have that break from 2013 to 2017 serving in the mil his his mandatory military for for Korea um so this one's been brewing for a while and then like I said, the co-main event is also another great event or another great fight because that has title implications as to who's going to fight Valentina Shevchenko next or, or, or Jennifer Maya if she does win that fight. So getting into the main event, the Korean Zombie versus Brian Ortega, why this fight is so important. Um, whoever wins this fight is, is probably going to go ahead and get a title shot. Right now, Volkanovski is a, is a champion in the featherweight division. So if Ortega wins, it's, it's very likely that he gets that shot. Um, but if, you know, somehow they do rebook that third fight against with uh, Volkanovski and Max, he probably wouldn't get a shot if Max was champion just because it was such a dominating fight immediately. And, and same thing for the zombie. The zombie's coming in and, and it's going to be his first chance to fight for a title in eight years. If if he wins against, um, against Ortega, he's going to fight for the championship. And the last time he's fought for the championship was 2013 against prime Jose Aldo. And yeah, nobody's beating prime Jose Aldo. Um, so for, for those guys, it's, it's huge title implications coming into this fight. Um, for Ortega, he's only 29 years old, even though he's been in the fight game since 2010. Uh, he's still only 29 years old, only has one defeat on his record. So it's going to be really good coming in. He wants to avenge that loss. And then on, on the other hand, of course, these guys have, these guys have bad blood. Uh, they've been talking shit in the back for the long, for the longest of times. So it's just finally get settled. So breaking down the fight a little bit, Ortega is coming in, obviously as a submission specialist, um, he has seven wins by submission of all of his wins, and um, he he's coming off a 22-month layoff. He's been out for a while. He broke his orbital. Pandemic happened. Uh, Chan Sun Chung uh, got surgery, so he's, he's been out for a while. And um, for him, he hasn't shown much as, as far as the striking game is concerned. He he does land 82% of his shots to the body when he shoots when he you know aims for the body. But it only does, he only targets it about 15% of the time. 80% of his shots are geared towards the head. And he only has a 27% average when it comes to attacking the head. Now, for, for Ortega, his keys to victory is he has to do a better job at, at defending himself. Right now, he averages about four shots given and seven shots received per minute. So it's about a negative or, you know, a negative three strike differential. And for somebody who's who's just gotten beat up so bad, by not just obviously a long time ago, but who's be, beat up for so long, um, that's not something you want to do. And especially against a striking and knockout specialist like the Korean Zombie. Second thing he needs to do is, is try to take this fight down. Zombie is obviously going to have the most power in the first couple of rounds. So um, you, you want to take him down. Obviously, if you can get him early, down early, he'll wear him out a little bit more, take away some of those pop from his punches. And then from there, in the later rounds, he can absorb some of those some more of those shots in those striking exchanges. Um, and, and for him, he needs to control range. He doesn't want to get in the in the distance of the of the striking of, of uh, 
of the Korean Zombie because if he's in that striking or in that striking box, that phone booth, it's going to be too much for him. He does not have the striking ability uh, to match up with the Korean Zombie. Now, for for Zombie, he's coming in. That's what he. That's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to keep the fight close enough so where he can strike and he can just beat Ortega up. For, he wants to make sure that he he headhunts in his last three fights he averages about 63 percent landed when he average when he targets the head so two of every three that he, he goes for to the head is going to hit and or take it each shots like we said he he averages about seven shots absorbed per minute so for him just just keep keep targeting the head it hasn't it's not broke don't fix it you're a great boxer or take is somebody who's going to walk into your shots just go ahead keep aiming for the head and go from there um, but he wants to avoid those really super, super close ranges, you know, elbow distance, because Ortega does throw those elbows. Um, he does tend to, uh, you know, has, has good, he'll jump for the guillotine. He does that so much where he'll just jump for the guillotine, and you'll see him uh, get people or get, you know, submissions off of that way. And he's, he's so good off his back, even if he gives up his back in those close range exchanges, it's okay, because he's, he, he'll get you in a triangle choke, or he'll try to get you in an arm, but he'll work something out. And then... Um, he needs for, for, for zombie, he needs to use his ground game effectively. If this fight does go out on the ground, it's not some, it's not a situation where zombie is going to come in completely outmatched. Zombie has eight submission wins and Ortega only has seven. So he does have more technically more submission wins. Um, but Ortega obviously is coming in as the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt compared to the brown belt of, of zombie. But for zombie, he needs to make sure if this fight does get to the ground, Keep it neutralized. Keep it where somewhere where Ortega can't pass his guard, where he can't set up for submissions, and then from there he'll be able to work at least the round will end. He'll be able to start fresh from the next round, or if not, he'll neutralize anything. And if he did any damage earlier in the round, that will be the main parts of the judge look at moving forward. Now, for my predictions in this fight, I'm gonna go ahead and take Zombie by late round TKO. I want to say fourth or fifth round. Um, Ortega is still young, so you're not too worried about. If he had took in, taken too much damage from that Holloway fight, and he's also had 22 months off, so even if he did take a little bit of damage, he does have enough time. He did have enough time to come in and recover, but I think that the the striking is just going to be too much for him. I think that Zombie has so much better hands that it's just going to overwhelm him over the course of the fight. Like I said, it would be really important for Ortega to take him down, uh, but Zombie has really good takedown defense. He averages at about 77% when it comes to his defense, so. If Ortega shoots and he, he gets him down maybe one or two round, he could win one of those two or one or two of those round, but he probably won't be doing much damage because of the sufficient ground game that Zombie has. And on the other hand, if the if the fight stays standing up, then there's no way that Ortega can win. Oh, not no way. Obviously, he has decent enough striking, but it's really the chances are very slim for Ortega to win this fight on the feet. And and even if he's able to land shots, that's why they call him the Korean Zombie is because he can eat shots. And just walk right through him and and ortega's coming in off of 22 months off so his timing is is going to be off the, the main thing that happens when you're off for so long is your timing is off so if he comes in and his timing is off right away you can't we can there is a potential that we can see an early round knockout by by zombie and and that's something i predict that that might happen um well not the early round knockout but the late round knockout i think that zombie is going to overwhelm him on the feet he's going to neutralize anything that happens on the ground and and he's, you know, that lack of hair by Brian Ortega since he shaved it all off is really going to be the difference maker. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but really, that um, the striking game is just going to be too much for Ortega. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and take the Korean Zombie, Chan Sung Jung, by fourth round TKO. Moving on to the co-main event of the night, we're going to see Caitlin Chikagian take on Jessica Andraj. Now, this is a great fight as well. Title implications coming into this fight. Whoever wins this fight is going to get... Valentina Shevchenko most likely unless Damian Maya is able to shock the world now why this fight matters is Andrade's Andrade is coming in making her 125 pound debut she is a former world champion at 115 pounds so she does have the skill and she's fought at 135 before so she has the power to be able to to do really well in this 125 round and give and give Shevchenko a different threat if she's able to win this fight now breaking down this fight a little bit more Chikagian is coming in and she's more of the point fighter. She's not going to go ahead and wow you with power. She'll more go ahead and pursue the volume over the course of the fight. She's her 80% of her wins, or I think 11 or 14 of her wins, um, 
have been by decision. So she's not going in there to try to knock you out, really. If she does get it, great. But she's not looking for the finish. She's looking for whatever her opponent gives her. She's going to go ahead and take. Now, for Andrade, she's coming in as a, so, such a good wrestler. Um, she averages about three takedowns per fight. And it's a three-round fight. So if she's able to get three takedowns, one per round should just put her, or even two in one round, one in the next round, should put her enough to win this fight. And she's she's much more well-rounded than Chikagi. And she has seven knockouts, seven submissions, and six decisions. So she's coming in with the ability to do it all. She doesn't have really a preference as to what's going to go down in the round, but she will chase the finish a lot more. And and she's the better striker. So compared to Chikagian's four strikes per minute, Andrade averages about six and a half. So about two and a half more per minute, and she has a lot more power in those punches. So she's coming in with a little bit more power, with a little bit better wrestling, and, and Chikagian is coming in with a little bit better volume, and she has the reach. She has, I think, an eight-inch reach, and a four and a half inch height advantage um but she she has she's so much longer it's not even you look at the the fight uh picture that we had up earlier that she's just so much taller than her and it, it'll be a little bit harder for andrage to close the distance especially at against such a tight such a bigger fighter now getting into the keys to victory for chikagian she wants to keep distance in this fight andrage's backup to not being able to strike in this fight is going to be using her wrestling so if Chikagian is able to keep the distance and avoid or see those shots coming to her, her takedown defense is going to be a lot better. And like that's like another point is really just avoid those takedowns. If she can keep that distance, that leads into her next point, which is avoiding those takedowns. And um, if she can avoid those takedowns and keep the fight on the feet, she's going to be able to rack up those points over the course of the fight. And that's what she wants to do. That is her game. So if she's able to do that, that's that's more the better for her. And she's gonna need to increase her accuracy. Right now she's punch or she's striking at about a thirty-five percent clip. And um you wanna get that up at least a little bit mid forties or fifty percent. Now it's gonna be a little bit different against somebody with the power of Andrage, because you don't wanna enter that phone booth and get into that that exchange, that close range exchange where Andrage can hit you with that right, that overhand right. But you want to make sure that you're not also wasting your shots because if she takes you down, then you're not going to win this fight. Now for Andrade, the main thing for her is she, she needs to use her power and be aggressive. Being the shorter fighter, she's going to be the one that has to close the range because Jokagian is always going to be in range in this fight. Andrade needs to get into her range. So for, for, for Andrade, she needs to come in, be aggressive, try to walk her down, um, cut the cage off, not just chase her. So that you know she has her corner and she's able to use that fence as an extra you know an extra partner to to block her off. And if the if the volume or the power um, isn't there for her, and if she's not able to land, I think she's gonna need to take this fight down. And I think that's something that's really key for Andrade is that she should she needs to be malleable and she needs to be flexible in this fight because if she comes in and she's just looking to knock out Chikagian and try to get a quick shot to the title and fight uh, Valentina Shevchenko she might not be able to win the fight because if you're chasing the knockout, you're not always going to win on the scorecards. So for her, I think she needs to come in and, and be really flexible with what her her game plan is. If she's not able to take down Chikagian, then, or if she's not able to strike with Chikagian, she needs to take her down because she has much superior grappler game. And if she, you know, being a Brazilian black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, if she's able to get on top, she's going to control this fight. And you don't see a way where Chikagian can get up against a much stronger Andrade. Now, what I how I think this fight is going to go down, I think this will go to the scorecards. I don't think we're going to see a knockout just because it's going to be difficult for Andrade to close that range unless he just catches her slipping. Um, but main thing for her, for Andrade, I think she needs to use the wrestling. Um, if she's able to come in and, and take her down right away, that's going to give Chikagian the fear of the shot. And if, if Andrade comes in and she wins that first round and she's able to take her down and control her there, all Chikagian is going to take think about the next round is the takedown. And when you're thinking about the takedown, you go and you drop your hands low to try to catch that shot to try to dig those underhooks. And if, she, if, if Andrade fakes the takedown and goes for an overhand right, you can see that where, where Andrade gets the knockout that way. Um, and use her finishing ability. You know, if, if Andrade gets top position... To try to finish the fight try to get that sub keep working on it keep grinding on it and i think that's how andrage is gonna really win this fight is just by keep moving forward 
try to pass guard, try to work into a submission, try to do ground and pound. And if she's a, if the fights, if she's doing well on the feet, use that power because that's really what's what's her advantage is on the feet. It's not the volume. Uh, Chikagian is coming in with the volume, and if Chikagian is able to use that volume, use that range, avoid the takedown, she'll win this fight. But I think that Andrade just has the much better uh, wrestling, and and we see with Chikagian, she averages about twenty five or a little bit lower than uh, with that as with her takedown defense. So you don't see her taking or keeping this fight up for the entire fight. Uh, Andrade will come in, try to take her shots, and if not, she'll she'll you know work her way to a victory, and. Um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and take Andrade by decision. That's just a safer bet. If you want to take maybe a knockout, I would probably do a second or third round knockout just because uh, Andrade will threaten the wrestling and then go for the knockout. But we're going to go ahead and take Andrade by decision. Thanks for watching the UFC Fight Island 6 preview show on the Three Piece Combo MMA show brought to you by the Five Reasons Sports Network. I'm your host, Jonathan, a.k.a. Three Piece Combo, and I hope you guys enjoy the fight and have a great weekend.